Swift Mahanikamis coming around again means that we get to see people posting about food they make and things they do, um, stuff that they make, their pets. Basically, there's lots of things posted besides just Secret Santa, and it's pretty fucking great. We've got oysters and avos and wavelets, gold eagles, queen of the goats and a queen of the emus. But do you recall the swiftiest gnome of them all? Angie, the female gnome king, does a lot of real cool shit. She is a badass cat mom, and her drawings are legit. Rin Fair, she's been there, done that. Best dressed gnome king in the land. Good taste in games and music. She's really got it all in hand. Then one balmy Florida night, all Swift talked her way. He thought her name was really neat. I'm sure it made her day. Then how the squatters loved her. She's just so jilling down to earth. Long live the Angie Numb King. Merry Swiftness, peace on earth. And now for something entirely long and boring, a time-lapse art project by the Gnome. So this is just going to be a ramble over my drawing. I decided to draw a gnome and a fairy. Uh, the gnome has a crown, the fairy has a crown. I thought it would be cool. Uh, you're in, you know, because you have the Instagram handle. Uh, to me, I always read it as fairy queen. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but that's how I see it. And I'm the gnome king, so I thought it would be cute to kind of draw characters of that. Um, I use a reference every time I draw. I mix references. I just I can't draw from my skull, except for the gnome. The gnome was probably the easiest thing, but that's just because I've drawn gnomes on different things enough times that I can kind of just <laughs> draw them without really thinking about it. Uh, fairies, on the other hand, not not so familiar with. Uh, and. So I looked at a lot of things I needed to figure out how to draw curly hair because I'd never really done it before. And uh, just looking at different references for crowns and stuff. I'm really bad at keeping my sketch lines light, as you can see. I wasn't darkening them on purpose so that they'd be more visible. That's just how bad I am at that stuff. Um, but yeah. I'm just gonna ramble. I don't know if I said that. I was thinking about doing like a Bob Ross voiceover, but like this is so fast paced I can't sound calm. So now I'm just gonna talk about things. Uh, there's me texting away, or thumb wrestling, as I like to call it. Uh, I'm just outlining with a black Prismacolor marker, fine marker, with the zero one. That's what I start with all my outlines. And I'll go back in later and darken it if I need to. Uh, then I take the Sakura 005 up and go into smaller details. And then I erase all of my pencil stuff. And I go back in with the 005 and fix up anything that maybe didn't connect right away because I'm not a genius. So here's my personal color mark pencils. Um, excuse me, it's one in the one. <laughs> I have a handy dandy chart because I don't like to test pencils all the time, I just like to be able to see the actual true color. Um, and it's on a piece of sketch paper that I use, like my, my most used sketchbook is that kind of paper. This is actually a bigger sketchbook than normal because I wanted to make it a bigger picture. Um, <laughs> so I'll look at that chart a lot as I'm, go I'm coloring. It makes it easier to figure out how I want to shade things. I wish I had more blues. I feel like I don't have enough blues that are close enough to each other to shade properly. But what can you do? This took me a couple of days to complete. Um, just because I was doing other things with my life. <laughs> so this was like a, I needed some time to sit down and be quiet and uh, not be 
bothered by people so I could just film and not have to keep pausing the film to do it. So I would do it in long stints uh, instead of just not. Um, in fact, most of the coloring I did earlier today, the only thing that I didn't color today was the hat I did that last night. Um, the gnome color scheme is actually based off of the gnome on my leg. I have a big gnome tattoo and he's got a mouse friend surrounded by moss and rocks and mushrooms and all that. Coloring in the face and I realized that I forgot to put lines inside the ear so that it just looked like a satellite dish. <laughs> I guess that happens. Um, I have all of these like oranges and reds and pinks in my color pencil set but I feel like they don't give you enough cool colors. The thing I hate the most about that set, that that's the 48 Prismacolor, is they don't give you uh, any grays. They give you a black and a white, so you just have to be really good with shading, which I'm not, um, and blending, which I'm not. I age heat big time. I use a Prismacolor colorless blender pencil, uh, but I mostly do that because it saves me having to really go through my color pencils because uh, I'm cheap and it's a lot cheaper to replace some colorless blenders that I go through than like having to buy new colored pencils every time I go through three or four of them. Um, here I'm coloring the leaf dress which I love the way it comes out and you'll see a final picture of it but I just uh, I love green. Green is my favorite color. Uh, here's my cat Tally <laughs> getting in the way. Uh, she's a good cat. She's very soft the softest cat I've ever pet. She's like a bunny. That's how soft she is. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, green. Green's a really nice color. I like leaves. Nature is really fun to to color because there's so many different things going on. Like a leaf can be yellow and orange and green at one time. It's not one solid color. So I tried to do that with the dress. I got all my Christmas shopping done today, so that was nice. <laughs> I have nothing left to buy. I can just relax for the next couple days, hang out. I decided to go with pink for the wings, because um, with the leaf dress, it, it's almost like the wings are a flower. Oh, there's Nala. Um, but the, it's almost like she's a flower, uh, but also a fairy. You know, she's got the pink wings, which are like the petals of the flower, and then leaf petals. I think I was just dancing there. I, yep, there I go. Uh, I'm always listening to music when I draw. It helps move things along. Um, I like drawing, but coloring can get tedious. Oh, I like the mushrooms. It's really nice. I used a couple different shades of red really went in there with the blending pencil and I just like the way they, the two colors came out together. I didn't really color in the lines trying to avoid those uh, white spots so it was a little sloppy on my part but I don't care. It gives a character. I was originally going to draw the gnome sitting on top of the mushroom and then I decided against it. I had drawn a couple of test sketches of it and I didn't like it at all so I ended up like this. And now I'm bringing the watercolor pencils into it and uh, to do the background because the fastest way to fill in a background is watercolor. This paper isn't really meant for watercolor, it's mixed media paper, but watercolor is always hard to deal with, but it did surprisingly well. It didn't warp as much as some other paper I've used, um, but I think that's because I was being very light-handed with the water. 
because I didn't want to over blend the lines. I still wanted the lines to be there to look like grass. I'm actually going to be talking more about this than I thought I would. I thought I would just ramble on, but I guess not. I started using a bigger brush and I didn't like it. <laughs> so I switched back to the little brush. Um, I do this at my computer desk, so that's why it looks really cramped. Um, I have a big, huge computer and a monitor and everything because I play a lot of video games online. And here I am going over the outline with a darker pen. That's the 03 Prismacolor Fine Pen. I'm almost done. And here we have a finished product. This is the final image and I, I hope you like it. I hope my video wasn't too boring. It was just nine minutes of me rambling about art and I'm not very good at that. So I'm sure it was kind of weird and I feel really awkward about this, but here it is. Uh, I hope you have, <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful, uh, holiday time and a happy new year and I'm going to go to bed now. <laughs> bye bye! Is this on? Yeah, it is. There's little numbers over here. Hello. Good morning. Um, this is my uh, Swiftmas Secret Santa something or other uh, for Dan. Hi, Dan. Where's the camera? There's the camera. Um, as some people know, I am currently studying for my final MA exam. And as such, I have to read like 400 or 500 articles um, and know all of them. So my brain is not really open to other things. So I have no um, like uh, inspired ideas for videos. Um, so instead, <laughs> um, since Dan likes math and stuff and I like archaeology and stuff, I am going to take those two and put them like together, together, and um, and read you a, a, a piece of an article using um, mathematical modeling to test um, obsidian exchange networks in the um, uh, Levant from like Turkey. Because there's like um, obsidian in Turkey. Let's say it's up here. There's two sources in Turkey up here. And then uh, the Levant, um, as in like modern day Israel and Palestine and Jordan and stuff, are like down here. And it's really far away. And there's no obsidian down here. But we do find obsidian down here on my knee, my unicorn knee. Can you see my unicorns? Um, and. And we find it in different um, levels, in different um, amounts, in different archaeological sites uh, from early on, uh, 15,000 years ago, 12,000 years ago. And then it increases about 10,000, 11,000 years ago in the beginning of the Neolithic. And then um, it gets more like into the, the like middle ne Neolithic. So there's like er there's early Neolithic, which is PPNA, pre-pottery Neolithic A, and then there's pre-pottery pottery neolithic b which is after um so there's a lot of theories about how this um uh, from up here gets to down here if it's um like people going from down here and then you know walking up to turkey which is a few like hundreds of kilometers away and bringing um obsidian back down um and uh um or if it's like a complex trade network um so uh with 
will be the result of this mathematical thing, which I'm not going to read you the whole damn thing because it's a 11 page article and that is um, more than I can handle it, it this time in the morning. So I'm going to skip to a, a part of the thing and uh, perhaps flip the camera over at some point to show you some pictures. I've been talking for three minutes and I haven't started reading yet. <laughs> this is going to be long. Um, so this is for you, Dan. Mathematical modeling of obsidian um, uh, complex networks for the exchange of obsidian uh, on the onset of the Near Eastern Neolithic by uh, Ibnez et al. 2015, uh, published in the Journal of Royal uh, Society something international something. My little hair won't get into place. Okay, so um, uh, sorry, I'm getting over a cold. Um, so, obsidian uh, stuff, dragon glass from the north to the south. How does it get there? Is it dragons? Is it Jon Snow? Is it Stannis? Okay. Um, complex networks of obsidian exchange. Obsidian, obsidian exchange can be studied as a network whereby nodes are constructed by sedentary villages joined by exchange links. Network theory can be a source of alternative models to down the line exchange models. In network theory, it is acknowledged that in addition to simple networks, which are purely, purely regular, uh, whereas in each node is connected to all its neighbors, um, or purely random, each node is randomly connected to any other node, other complex networks exist, existed where nodes were connected to their neighbors, while certain other nodes were also linked to distant nodes. Uh, showing non-trivial topological features. Uh, ah, yeah, I'm not very good at reading things out loud. Uh, all nodes are, certain nodes are linked to other distant nodes showing non-trivial topological features. Uh, two people, Watson something, established that networks are defined by path lengths, length, L, uh, the property measuring the mean separation between two nodes and the clustering coefficient, C, measuring the degree to which agents tend to group together in local neighborhoods. Path lengths, which is L, uh, involves the number of nodes an agent needs in order to cross um, space running out. Uh, where am I? Um, path length is therefore not related to physical distance, but to the number of steps made. The clustering coefficient measures to what extent nodes are preferentially linked to their near neighbors, nearest nodes, rather than distant nodes. This is measured by the proportion of links that really exist between nodes within a neighborhood, divided by the number of links that could possibly exist between them. Um, regular networks which where each node connects to all of its nearest neighbors and all the nodes show similar degree of uh, connectivity, uh, show a high clustering coefficient and a high mean path length. In random networks, any node can connect randomly to any other uh, node, irrespectively of the number of nodes existing between them. Such networks can show a low mean path length and a low clustering coefficient. Complex networks, uh, which are presented in a great variety of natural and uh, social systems lie midway between the regular uh, <coughs> and random networks. In these networks, neighboring nodes are um, uh, interconnected, forming local clusters, but some of them are also able to interact with distant nodes by establishing shortcuts. For our case study, down the line model could be assimilated into a regular network as villages are connected with their neighbors and there are no distant exchange links. Regular networks show strong neighbor connections, high clustering coefficient. This offers a plausible scenario for their case study as preferential, preferential linkage of villages and local clusters are common in the ethnographic literature on exchange systems between sedentary and farming communities. 
and applicable to the applicable I'm getting yeah applicable to Near Eastern context uh, whatever I'm not gonna continue reading this because it's long and I'm running out of space um, but I'll show you a picture of stuff uh, will I though uh, okay never mind I'll just this is working these are the networks right okay so this is the network where uh, this uh, god damn it the one with the red dots is the one we're talking about uh, obsidian was exchanged between places it got to places uh, probably by like some villages being like the main holder of um, obsidian and then they distribute it to some places um, and uh, stuff it's mathematically proven I'll uh, maybe read the rest of this later at some point and uh Swiftmas. This is my so very totally incredibly secret Santa gift for Billy. And I thought, what better way to rein in the festive period than with a recital in verse of a traditional Scottish legend. The year was 1862, the day was Christmas Eve. This is the tale of mankind's first flight, a tale you won't believe. Above the Scottish Highlands, on the cold December night, there hung a drunk old Scotsman, suspended from a kite. I'll catch that bastard Santa, and introduce him to my fist. I'll teach that fat old geezer to put me on the naughty list. Out from behind a nearby cloud, reindeer pulled a sleigh. The kilted crusader laughed with glee and went forth to cause dismay. He steered his kite into the wind and readied his mighty paw. He pulled up alongside St. Nick and decked him across the jaw. You'll pay for this most dearly, Santa bellowed through the pane. Then he used his magic powers to turn his assailant into a train. So don't be fooled by the Wright brothers. They were forty years behind, a drunk old man from Scotland with vengeance on his mind. And if e'er you need to travel, the flying Scotsman's fit for purpose. That is, unless you find yourself on the replacement bus service.
In the Swifty Squad, there are a lot of characters, with interesting backstories and strange names, from exotic locations all around the globe. You have Hairless Oyster, who's always taking lovely photographs and reminding everyone to stay hydrated. You have Reke, whose name nobody can pronounce and who possesses sleuthing skills useful in finding out people's true identities. We could go on and on about all the characters in the story, er, squad, but in this video we're going to take a look at one of our smaller characters. No, lit literally, she might be the smallest one here. Hobbit's not included. That's right, today we're looking at Jessica Min, or Min, as she's called, by me at least. Joining the squad in July of 2017, it was clear from one of her earliest posts that she was, how do we say, an imaginative person. Nowhere has this particular quality shown itself more plainly than during the Grill the Swifter posts, where she has been known to ask some very, shall we say, interesting and often rather dark questions. And this is what makes her one of the more complex characters in the squad. On the surface, she seems all sweet and innocent, but the next thing you know, she's asking you about cannibalism, or the Holocaust, or how Theon pees now that he's castrated. Seriously, look at all these cues. One other thing that's apparent, and we would be remiss here if we didn't mention it, is her love for all things Harry Potter. Aside from being an avid Harry Potter abridged fan, blood. She's even gone so far as to purchase the bonus books that are companions to the main novels, as seen here. Okay, listen, I could go on and on. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of Q's and A's and posts in the squad from our beloved men. But as I've kept this very late indeed, and I'm a bit under the weather, let me just wish you the merriest of Swiftmases, and I hope that you are having a lovely holiday. So this is Christmas I hope you have fun We begin today's tale on a fine sunny Christmas afternoon. Today you shall hear from me, Jay Min, the secret Santa of Da 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 Brent Pearson. Merry Christmas, Brent, from your secret Santa Jay Min. I have no I have no editing skills or no video skills, so I've decided to do a smash hit recall of all your posts in the squad, minus some that were too complicated to draw, such as a squirrel attacking a bird feeder. Very amusing, but a bit beyond my limited drawing skills. So, we begin with your true facts about some marsupials, which I have added to my YouTube list as it is a very good video. I love that series and it's teaching me about many marsupials that come from the homeland of Australia, which actually has animals that are non-horrific and deadly and don't want to kill you. So we also have the, uh, this is disorientating, the Popeyes, I'm probably saying that wrong because it's an American brand, support chicken. A very pleasing article and your hello soap if only we could order that by dozen and send them to each other we have the hodor doorstop which look we're not gonna say anymore it's too early for that still let's move on we have the tag your it rock the flemant brax pjs featuring my very dodgy approximation of your face the only defining feature being your moustache and beard, that's all I can do. We have your sh shakshuka, which kind of looks like a kind of a Korean dish. But to be fair, a lot of Korean dishes are red and spotty and have white eggs floating in them. So who knows where it actually originates from. I should look that up. We have your Silent Night King jumper, which I think is also another great piece of merchandise. Um, he looks like he is a kind of weird demon who is addicted to black eyeliner, but again, that was my best attempt at doing the Night's King. And finally, we have the day that you joined the squad, the squad, the illustrious June 2017. I hope wherever you are, you're having a lovely Christmas and you're enjoying yourself. And 
that is it from me and my awkward video. Good night all and Merry Christmas to the squad. A Swifty Fairy Tale. Once upon a time, inside a lemon pie filling can deep in the forest, two best friends lived. Adva and Una loved to explore together. Through the daisies, through the grass, through the rocks, they found a strange Swifty pond where a talking fish told them about the wish granting flower. What did Adva wish for? Chocolate socks. The fish thought this was an excellent wish, so the flower made sure that Adva and Una had enough chocolate socks for the rest of their lives. The fish and the flower only grant wishes that they agree are excellent. Hey y'all, and hey uh, Beth. <laughs> What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? So, as you know, our resident fruit is here under an alias. She goes by Smash Double. Snooping back a bit told me that she's done it due to uh, stranger danger. Smart. She's a kid, but we'll get there in a minute. I said it was smart, and while she has managed to not be found and killed, I think the Avo thing also kind of backfired. Here's what one finds when one searches for Avo in the squad. This is ludicrous, almost infuriating, unless... Have you done too good of a job in pretending to be a smashed avocado that you've managed to convince us all? I feel like that is what has happened. So, here is my swiftness gift to you. Be quiet and listen, squatters of mine, for today you shall learn knowledge. Smashed Avo is not, I repeat, is not an avocado. In actual fact, she is a full-fledged human person with a human person body. More accurately, Smashed Avo is a 19-year-old young woman named Bethany. Even further still, she's a mug collector and an English and history major on her way of becoming a teacher, the most noblest of professions. I will now reiterate, Smashed Avo is a human. So here is my swiftness gift to you, young Bethany. I bestow upon you your identity back. Use it well and don't do drugs. Happy swiftness. Swiftness, everyone, it's me, Smash Devo, coming right back at your screens with another Swiftness Secret Santa video. This time it's for one Miriam. Okay, so it's actually Christmas Day here, full disclosure. Spoilers, it's going pretty well so far. But I have snuck away from my family very quickly to record this lovely video for you, Miriam. I hope your Swiftness is going mint um and just in general hope you're having a good time i thought you said you're on like a cruise or something which hell yeah you love a good cruise but i'm just going to very quickly give you this gift which continuing my streak from last year is going to be the gift of my vocal cords into your beautiful ear holes i'm sure they're very beautiful and i'm going to quickly sing the french version of jingle bells because you speak a lot of languages and i only speak two but one of those that is in common is french so i'm gonna attempt that hope i do not get 
any pronunciation wrong because that would be embarrassing because I do French as a subject and I hope I don't <laughs> screw up the rhyme pattern due to it being just to the tune of Jingle Bells and I have no music. It's just me in my room. So, here we go. <laughs> vive le vent, vive le vent, vive le vent d'hiver. Qui s'en va si fort souvent dans la grande appelle vert. Oh, vive le temps, vive le temps, vive le temps d'hiver. Boule de neige, jour de l'an et bonne aimée quand même. Sous le long chemin, tout blanc de neige blanche, un vieux monsieur s'avance avec ses cannes de la main et tous les les vents qui sifflaient dans les branches lui soufflaient de romance qu'il chantait petit enfant. Oh, vive les vents, vive les vents, vive les vents d'hiver qui s'en va si vent soufflant dans la grange à pain vert. Oh, vive les temps, vive les temps, vive les temps d'hiver. Boule de neige, je de la bonne année, grand-mère. Merry Christmas. Il faut être toujours ivre. Tout est là. C'est l'unique question. Pour ne pas sentir l'horrible fardeau du temps qui brise vos épaules et vous penche vers la terre, il faut vous enivrer sans trêve. Mais de quoi De vin, de poésie ou de vertu à votre guise. Et si quelquefois, sur les marches d'un palais, sur l'herbe verte d'un fossé, dans la solitude morne de votre chambre, vous vous réveillez, l'ivresse déjà diminuée ou disparue, demandez au vent, à la vague, à l'étoile, à l'oiseau, à l'horloge. À tout ce qui rit, à tout ce qui gémit, à tout ce qui fuit, à tout ce qui chante, à tout ce qui parle. Demandez quelle heure il est. Et le vent, la vague, l'oiseau, l'horloge vous répondront. Il est l'heure de s'enivrer. Pour ne pas être les esclaves martyrisés du temps, enivrez-vous. Enivrez-vous sans trêve, de vin, de poésie ou de vertu, à votre guise. Here's to your health, Tiana. Have a merry, merry Christmas. Cheers. You joke. Hey. Hi, Emily. It's me. Your your shrifty Santa Claus for this year. And so, I put a lot of thought into what I could do for this. I struggled. And I thought about it. I thought, what does everybody need? Everybody needs life to be that bit easier, right? So, you've had a little bit more experience in life than I have. But I think I've picked up a few things across the way that might just help. Not just you, but anybody who watches. Um, I think this stuff will come in handy, so I made a, a short little video of some life hacks for you. Enjoy. Is your ice cream too cold to scoop? Stick that bad boy in the microwave. Ever need to measure something and you don't have a ruler? Just Google a picture of a ruler. And save it for later. Can you smell gas in your kitchen and you don't know where it's coming from? Just use a lighter. Do you find yourself in dark places a lot? Just take a picture of the sun and save it. Now you have a portable sun wherever you go. How to get away with washing the frying pan. Step one, fill it with hot soapy water. Step two, tell everybody it needs to soak. Hey, hey everybody, this frying pan needs to soak. And then just fucking forget about it. How to get free Doritos. Hey, hey bro, you, you, you want some Doritos? Oh yeah, sure. Sweet, thanks bro. Uh, <coughs> I, I, I 
bro. You can, you can, you just keep them. Are you trying to stay healthy? Just drink a ton of alcohol, kills all the germs in your body. Live longer. You want to fool burglars into thinking you got some sort of high-tech security to get into your house? Take a tablet packet in the inside of the door with some numbers on it, so it looks like a cool fucking keypad. I know sometimes you're sitting there thinking, what the hell do I do with all these bottle caps? You can turn them into fancy trophy holders for your items. Aha! You know when you're trying to measure how many tablets you want to take? I got you. You can use the lid of your tablet to count. It, it's foolproof. You know when you're at like a really important business meeting and you need to take notes? Uh, you could use Microsoft's OneNote or you could always use paint. Take it one step further and type them on signs in Minecraft.